I just spent a week scuba diving in Curacao, where I put the Insta360 Ace Pro up against the GoPro Hero 12 to see which one is truly the best underwater action camera for scuba divers. I compared both cameras in normal conditions within their dive housings, took them on a night dive, and then took the raw footage out of the cameras without any extra editing or color correcting of any kind to see which one was better. In this video, I'll show you the results, and then I'll talk about some of the unique features of the Insta360 Ace Pro that really makes it stand out compared to the GoPro Hero 12. Let's get into it. After doing an initial review of the Insta360 Ace Pro at launch, so many people asked me down in the comments if I could do a review including the dive housing and then also comparing it to the GoPro Hero 12 when taken deeper than 10 meters. In that video, I stayed at 10 meters or less and used it without the housing to show how easy it is to just jump in the water. But now I wanted to go ahead and compare it within the housing and put it head to head with the top action camera competitor, the GoPro Hero 12 to see which one was truly better. Insta360 actually asked me if I'd be willing to make the comparison video after seeing all of those comments come in, and I was so excited to take part of it. So while they did sponsor this video, I told them that I wanted to be able to say all of my own genuine comments and what I truly thought of each camera after doing a head-to-head -head comparison, and they agreed. Therefore, all the statements I say about each camera are completely my own, and that had no effect on my actual review of these comparisons. All right, so with that out of the way, let's talk about how I actually tested out these cameras. For the test, I didn't want to just dive in my local quarry. I actually took them on a trip to Curacao with me, which is down in the Caribbean, just off the coast of Venezuela by Bonaire and Aruba, if you're familiar with those islands. I put both the Insta360 Ace Pro and the GoPro Hero 12 into their own official housings, mounted them both on selfie sticks, and then took them down with me with all of the original settings on the camera. That's the factory default video settings. I didn't make any changes at all with the idea or the intent of the video being, I wanna compare taking this right out of the box, jumping in the water with the housing on and not having to fiddle with all the different settings and try to figure out how the camera works, I just wanna jump in the water and start shooting footage. All of the footage you're gonna see in all these different comparisons is gonna be completely raw out of the camera. I didn't make any changes to color correcting, to white balance settings, or anything like that that might affect the final output of the image. All I did was transfer the footage from the respective cameras to the Insta360 app and then the GoPro Quick app, respectively. And those were on my iPhone 14 Pro. I didn't make any other changes. I just exported and saved to my photo album. And then I used AirDrop to transfer it to my MacBook Pro so I could put it into Adobe Premiere Pro and do this 50-50 comparison that we're doing on screen. Again, I just wanna emphasize there was no color correcting, color grading, denoising, or anything like that done within Premiere Pro or in the individual apps themselves. I just took the footage, transferred it over, dropped in the timeline, and made this video for y'all to see. When I was actually filming underwater, I hit the record button on both cameras one after the other, set them right next to each other with the selfie sticks, and that way I could try to match the shot as best as possible where the only thing I had to do was trim the couple seconds it took me to hit start on one and start on the next one at the very beginning and then at the end of the footage. Finally, because I know this will come up in the comments, all of the footage I took was between about 30 feet and 75 feet, so well within recreational limits. Uh, that's about nine meters and 23 meters. All right, so with the stage set and all of that out of the way, let's take a look at what the cameras actually produced. First of all, I just have to say that both images here look pretty great raw out of the camera. I think that if you actually just looked at one video file first and you didn't have the other one to compare it to, you would be pretty happy with either one of them and probably go ahead and post it to your social media or post it to YouTube or whatever you were gonna do. But when you do start actually comparing them side by side, there's quite a few differences to point out and I think there's a clear winner that starts to emerge. The first major difference to me is the auto white balance setting between each camera. On the GoPro, in some of the footage, there's kind of a color shift that happens where it's basically the auto white balance adjusting for the ambient light from basically the sunlight that's coming in and things just kind of changing some, whether you're a little bit shallower or deeper into the water. And because action cameras don't have a way to adjust white balance on the fly, you have to rely on auto white balance. And that auto white balance can mean that colors change underwater. Now, when it comes to this, I think the Ace Pro does a better job handling the light change and the variance in that. And there's just more consistency in the footage. You don't see a massive color shift from like a green to a red or you know, a red to a green or anything like that in the footage. It seems to be really smooth and consistent throughout in the testing that I did. 
Now, white balance is important because if your white balance is off, whether you're on land or underwater for that matter, the color of your video is gonna be off and you're gonna have to do something called color correcting or color grading. And there's only so much you can do when you say, hey, I'm gonna fix it in post uh, to really do this. And again, on these videos, I just took it raw out of the camera because I'm kind of taking the idea of hopping in the water and you know not doing lots of adjustments to the settings and knowing how the camera works and getting into the advanced or pro modes and trying to figure out like, okay, what you know, exact white balance setting should I have? What exact shutter speed or ISO setting should I have? Like just leave it on auto, take it out of the box, throw it in the dive housing and take it shooting with you. And really what comes into play here with the white balance is now leading into color correcting. So on the GoPro, what you get is what you get. Um, that footage is raw and unless you make adjustments in post, you aren't really gonna get any different footage out of it. Now on the Insta360 Ace Pro, I didn't color correct the footage myself. That's a key indicator here because there is actually a built-in AI chip on the device itself that is using something called AquaVision 2.0, as well as a few other enhancements like pure video and other things that uh, Insta360 uses and, and calls to basically have that AI chip that's on the device improve the image quality, clarity, and color as it saves to your micro SD card. So I didn't export this and make edits myself. The AI chip actually made those decisions and color corrected the footage for me as it saved it to the micro SD card. So that basically just means that we get a better color corrected image on the device itself, even though I didn't have to do any color correcting myself. So kind of a, I guess a cheat for the Ace Pro, but it's really a pro for the Ace Pro because again, that built-in AI chip is gonna give you a better image quality. And again, more consistency with the automatic white balancing that's happening. And again, that leads to the color correctness underwater as well. And we don't get that green or blue footage or the color shifts that happen on the Hero 12. The next thing to call out is the Ace Pro footage has a little less grain in the image itself. And this is actually by design as well because of that built-in AI chip. So Pure Vision, which is something I mentioned earlier, also applies an automatic denoiser on the device itself. So that denoiser runs from the AI chip that actually applies as the footage is saving to the micro SD card. So again, you end up with a cleaned up video file, uh, which you just don't get on the GoPro. The GoPro doesn't have that AI chip. It doesn't have that built into it. So what you would normally do is if you had a specific file that needed to be cleaned up with a little bit more uh, clarity or you know just less noise in the image, and the noise is like those digital specs or uh, the, the graininess in the film, so to speak, uh, you would have to run something called a denoiser, which can take a whole bunch of extra time in your editing software. Um, it's not something you wanna do a lot because it takes so much extra resourcing from your computing power. And again, just makes your export time so much longer. And all of that to say, if you're not a video editor, the picture looks a little less uh, grainy and is more clear on the Ace Pro compared to the Hero 12 because of that AI chip and the Pure Vision and Denoiser feature that's, that's just built into the device without any extra editing or any extra uh, manual input from me. So taking a look at the overall footage during normal conditions during daylight where it's maybe partly cloudy or completely sunny out there in Curacao, depending on the day, uh, it might've been at around 30 feet or down at 75 feet, you know, right in that depth range. I think there's a clear winner here and the Ace Pro not only functions really well within the dive housing, which was a question from my previous video, but I think it actually does better than the GoPro Hero 12 here. Again, the Hero 12 does great with, you know, just a raw image in general, but when you really show them side by side, I think you'd be much happier if you had the Ace Pro footage instead of the Hero 12, unless you did a lot of extra work cleaning up the footage, doing color correcting and things like that. It might be a different story, but that is a lot of extra effort and you might end up with the same or, you know, maybe even slightly worse still uh, image quality than you do with the Ace Pro just raw out of the camera. But again, that's during daylight, normal conditions, clear skies, you know, kind of what we expect is most action cameras are gonna perform well. So what about during the night diving when really we know that sometimes action cameras just struggle at night, especially underwater? Well, let me set the stage for you so you have an understanding of the conditions before I show you the comparison footage from the night dive. Now, I did a whole bunch of diving over the week, but I only did a single night dive and it happened to be on an evening that was a new moon, which basically means that there was no moon in the sky or basically no moonlight coming from the moon in the sky. Uh, and then the stars were also pretty covered because it was a fairly overcast day. It had been raining off and on throughout the the week. And for this night, of course, it happened to be a little bit more overcast. All of that is to say that there was almost no natural light coming into the water to help us out here. All the light you see is just ambient light from other divers with their dive torches or ambient light from my own dive torch. Uh, occasionally I was using my dive torch in a more direct way, but I didn't have any video lights or extra lights around or anything like that to help light up the scene. Finally, I just wanna reiterate what I said during the daylight footage that I didn't touch any settings on the cameras, okay? I didn't touch anything from the default. I left the ISO settings exactly the same, whatever they were set to. I, I think they're both on auto, I don't even know. 
I, I believe they're both on complete auto. Uh, if it's GoPro, there might be just off the top of my head, a low of 100 and a high of 1600. And I think that's just a default setting on the GoPro, but I would actually have to check to see if there's any specifics there because I just left the default video setting on both cameras and jumped in the water. Again, within the housing, on selfie sticks, side-by-side -side recording with no extra light except for the torch I was hanging and clipped off because my hands were occupied with the uh, selfie sticks and then the ambient light of other divers. And again, occasionally I held both selfie sticks in one hand pretty terribly and took my torch and was trying to light up the scene a little bit. Now, I thought about taking video lights down or you know making adjustments to the settings and really customizing it to get it like ready for a night diving mode. But I thought about this more and action cameras should just work and be beginner friendly. Like, yes, we wanna have advanced features for people that know what they're doing with videography to make those tweaks and try out different things with their exposure compensation and their ISO settings and shutter speeds and apertures if they can adjust those, which you can't on action cameras, but you know, kind of doing everything you can to get the exposure set properly for a night scene, especially night diving. But again, as an action camera user, most of us just take those in the box and you know maybe make a few tweaks here and there. But unless we look up a video guide on how to set up a camera perfectly for underwater settings, we're not gonna be doing that. We're just gonna leave things on auto and get in the water. So I wanted to represent that type of persona with getting in the water, knowing that it might get even better if we did make specific setting tweaks to the cameras themselves. Uh, with the video lights, kind of the same idea here. Action camera users are picking action cameras because they don't want to spend thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on a DSLR, plus a housing, plus a tray, plus lights, plus floats, and you know all those things that kind of come into play. And yes, you can kind of slowly add those things up to your action camera kit, and I think that's something that a lot of people can do to get really great footage out of an action camera even, let alone eventually upgrading to a DSLR. I didn't want to do that because video lights can be a few hundred dollars each. You usually need two of them. They have to have arms and trays and things like that too. And again, I just wanted to show the experience of like taking it out of the kit, you get the dive bundle kit, put the camera into the housing, put it on a selfie stick and jump in the water with just your dive torch, which you would need on any normal night dive without any extra junk that you had to buy basically. And this is the raw footage coming out of that. All right, so with all of that out of the way, as unbiased as I really wanted to be in this video, I have to say the Insta360 Ace Pro just completely destroyed the GoPro Hero 12 in this underwater night diving setting. I mean, it's not even close. Just take a look at this footage. There's literally no way you could say the Hero 12 came up with a better quality image than the Ace Pro in this underwater video footage. In some cases, you can't even tell that there's a diver in front of me. And then you see the Ace Pro footage and you're like, wow, there's literally an entire person right there that the GoPro completely missed. Now, yes, okay, I, I admit I did not use video lights. I didn't make adjustments to the camera settings like I talked about. But again, this is supposed to be just comparing the videos like one for one without any extra accessories or anything that people would have to buy. If the Ace Pro can do this raw, by default without any extra settings, imagine if there were video lights, or imagine if I did change the settings some, or if I did do any adjustments in post-editing software. That would just be insane, and I think it would still blow the GoPro Hero 12 just completely out of the water. And I'm sorry, GoPro, I I've used you for a long time, and it kind of hurts me to say this, but I think the Ace Pro just is clearly winning here, and there's quite a few reasons why as well. Honestly, it's just a few simple things in my personal opinion, but it's something that the GoPro just doesn't have on its current model, and I think that's why the Ace Pro is doing so much better. First of all, I talked about this earlier, but Insta360 has that AI chip that's on board the camera itself, and what it's doing is it's actually performing denoising, which is gonna get rid of all the extra grain that can come from higher ISO settings on a camera. Uh, it's also using pure video, which again, I talked about earlier as well, but pure video is gonna be auto white balancing and adjusting for night diving. So night footage, whether you're on land or underwater, Pure Video has been optimized for that with the AI tuned for it as well, even underwater footage. So it literally makes the image much more brighter, much more defined, and just have so much more accurate colors underwater. So even without the video lights, even where it's probably cranking the ISO setting way higher than what the uh, automatic setting would do normally, or maybe what someone would feel comfortable with normally, even though it's doing that, the denoising function and that pure video function is cleaning up the footage and you're getting this great shot afterwards. Next, and probably even more importantly, 
The lens on the Ace Pro is actually much larger than the GoPro Hero 12's lens. It's one of the largest sensors that's actually available on any action camera at one over 1.3 inches. Now, in comparison, the GoPro Hero 12 has a sensor that's one over 1.9 inches, which may not sound like a lot, but it's actually quite a bit smaller than the Ace Pro. Now, why does a sensor matter, how big it is, etc. right? Well, in cameras, the larger the sensor, the more light that's allowed to hit the sensor. And that sensor is what takes the image that you're seeing and actually creates a digital image, which is the video or photo that you're taking with the camera itself, right? So the larger the sensor, the more light that comes in, which means more accurate colors, better white balancing, and better low light performance, which is what we're seeing on these night dives. When you add in the lens that was co-engineered with Leica, which is just gonna make it a super high quality piece of glass, I think it's just clear that all of those things combined is giving us such a better image during the night performance than what we saw as a direct comparison during the day, where maybe the GoPro Hero 12 could have been fine for your usage. I still think the Ace Pro did better, but maybe it could have gone fine with it. For night diving, the Hero 12 just does not compete. It just it just doesn't. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate that it's that way, but there's just no way you can compare these two. Now, when you sum up all this night diving comparison footage together, I think there's just a clear winner here and it's the Insta360 Ace Pro again. Now, before I move on, if you've already made your decision, then you can go ahead and click a link down in the description below to pick up the Insta360 dive bundle, which will come with that dive housing that I've been using throughout the video, uh, as well as a selfie stick and some other items. Make sure you add a memory card if you don't already have a micro SD card. I'll leave a link down there for that as well. Um, I'm also including a link to the GoPro Hero 12 dive bundle because, hey, you know, maybe you wanna go ahead and get that in Instead, maybe just trust the Hero 12 more and you're not fully convinced yet. And that's okay. I have a link down there for that as well. Again, with uh, the micro SD, just so you can pick that up in case you don't have one already. But if you need a little bit more convincing or you just wanna learn more about the Ace Pro, which again is my clear winner, then check out some of these unique features that I think will really convince you to go that route versus the Hero 12. GoPros have been around for a long time now and I've been a GoPro user for quite a while as well. I've had a number of them from the Hero 3, the Hero 4, the Hero 7, the Hero 9, the Hero 12 now, right? I mean, I, I've bought these cameras on my own. GoPro didn't send those to me or anything. But one of the biggest criticisms that they get is that from model to model, year after year, they just don't really innovate. I mean, there's like a few minimal improvements here and there, but usually there's not really a, a big innovative change that comes from GoPro. And again, that's one of the critiques that you'll see anywhere when you start searching GoPro and like, especially when a new model comes out, people start complaining that they just aren't really listening to the customers and they're kind of playing it safe. I think Ace Pro really changes that and disrupted the industry because when Insta360 launched the Ace Pro, they didn't want to just launch a competitor to the GoPro and like DJI Osmo and things like that. They wanted to be the clear winner and front runner and really disrupt the industry and show these new innovations that should be coming to the action camera market that just weren't present otherwise. For example, the Insta360 Ace Pro has that flip up screen on it, which lets you not only get awesome selfies, but also those low angle shots or just awkward angles where you can kind of flip up that screen and kind of see what you're shooting instead of just hoping that you're pointing in the right direction. Yes, that's only applicable when you're at 10 meters or less because it has to be outside of the housing, but I actually have a whole video showcasing that feature as well as some of these other features I'm gonna talk about that came out when the Ace Pro launched and you can actually check that out in the cards or down in the description below. The Ace Pro also allows you to pause and cancel recordings as well. So what this means is like, let's just say that I'm taking a shot underwater and I completely botch the shot. I can go ahead and press and hold on the capture button or the shutter button, whatever you wanna call it. And I'll actually get a little countdown timer on the screen that'll say cancel recording. And when that completes, it'll actually delete the file that was in progress. So I don't have to stop the recording and start over and then say like, okay, now that I transferred it to my phone, let me delete that five second shot that was completely botched. Uh, no, I, I get to save all that time completely. And just as I'm recording, I can delete that shot right away. Cause it's like, oh, nope, I messed up. No problem, cancel the recording. And I don't have to worry about dealing with it later on my SD card. There's also gesture controls. So I can actually start and stop recording by just raising my hand, or I can uh, start the selfie timer as well and take photos. If I just wanna do like a peace sign, I can take a photo of myself too. So while I'm in third person with that selfie stick or just away from the camera, let's say I set it on a tripod somewhere and I'm trying to get an action shot of myself, I can start and stop the recording by just raising my hand or doing that peace sign. And it does work underwater as well. Occasionally, depending on how far you are from the camera or you know what the scene is behind you, it might not recognize the gesture right away, but that actually leads to another point that Insta360 is actually really well known for updating their software and firmware, not just for like basic bug enhancements and things like that, but actually feature enhancements as well. And they always bring new features to the cameras and to their software and app itself, which will bring new things to the camera that you just couldn't do previously, where 
Unfortunately, again, GoPro's uh, kind of critiqued for this sometimes where they don't always bring new features to their software. Uh, the software is usually what it is. All the features are usually what it is at launch. And other than some minor improvements here and there, you don't get too many new features to the uh, GoPro series cameras. Now, the Ace Pro also has some other AI features that I haven't mentioned yet. So outside of the ones I mentioned earlier that talked about cleaning up the image and things like that, there's some extra things that you can get within the uh, Insta360 app as well when you're editing videos. So if you do decide to edit videos, you can do things like use the AI editing tool. So the AI editing tool will actually take highlights from the video clips that you've taken and automatically put them together uh, and synchronize them to basically make a clip that you can share out on social media without you having to do any editing yourself. It'll pick highlights for you. Uh, you can also manually select highlights from the videos if you want to, and then it'll edit it all together for you. You don't have to worry about doing all of that yourself. Uh, there's also a thing called AI warp, which is super, super cool. Uh, it'll actually completely transform the scene that you're in that you recorded. So uh, whether, again, you're on land or even underwater, it works. You can do this AI warp tool and do things like make a cyberpunk scene or a, an anime scene or a sci-fi scene or put yourself in space or you know something like that, which is really cool as well. Now, when you really start stacking all of these things up, you take a look at the comparison footage, you look at the unique features that the Ace Pro is bringing, it really makes me want to never go back to my GoPro Hero 12 again, except for maybe as a backup camera or like a second angle. And that's only because I don't have another Ace Pro that I could use instead. Uh, honestly, I mean, it hurts me to say that I've had, again, multiple GoPros. I've been using them for a number of years now. And I just don't see myself going back to GoPro unless they can make some major changes when the next version comes out. And who knows where Ace Pro is going to be at by then. You know, there could be way more software updates that open up even more things. Or Insta360 might decide to release an Ace Pro 2 in a couple years or something like that. And maybe again, it's going to disrupt the industry and I don't need to have a GoPro anymore. It's crazy. I, again, I've used GoPro forever, but I don't need them anymore. Now, if you've made the same conclusion as me, I'll have a link down in the description again to the Insta360 Ace Pro Dive Bundle, which will give you the Ace Pro itself, the dive housing, as well as a few other accessories. Um, I also have a link to a micro SD card because that is needed separately. That does not come with the dive bundle. So make sure you pick one up if you don't have it. And if you're still sold on GoPro, that's totally fine as well. I'll have a link down in the description to that bundle as well. So you can get the GoPro with their housing uh, and again, some other accessories with it. So either way, you can pick them up and you'll be able to take great footage underwater. I wanna you know, just be clear that taking and capturing memories and sharing those with your friends and family is the best way to spread the word about scuba diving. And as Jacques Cousteau once said, if you care about something, you will take care of it. So to protect our oceans and take care of them, we need to share the memories that we take as scuba divers so we can get more people into scuba diving and become more aware of their surroundings and their environmental impact that they're making. Now, if you'd like to see more in-depth footage about the Ace Pro outside of its housing, so you can see things like that flip up camera screen and some of the other unique features that I talked about, click or tap the screen now so you can check that out. And with that, stay safe, have fun, and let's go diving.